Hello YouTube, this is Eric from Coder Snacks. Today, we're going to talk about binary search trees. Let's get started. Trees don't get the love they should in interviews. Graphs and dictionaries are far more common. But having a data structure where you can do login, insert, delete, and find is a nice balance that is often useful. Let's dig in. Before we get into the problem, a few questions. What sizes of trees should we be able to handle? What kinds of values do these trees have? Ints, floats, strings, other comparables? What is the format or API that we can use to work with the tree? Does the tree contain duplicate nodes? For our purposes, we'll assume that the trees may be large, but fit in memory. We'll assume the value is an integer, and that the tree nodes have left, right, and value fields. Left and right are none if there's no subtree. We'll also assume node values are unique. What is a binary search tree? First, it's a binary tree, which means that each node has two direct children or less. In a binary tree, we refer to the children of a node as the left and right children. A binary search tree is a type of binary tree that is easily searchable. We achieve this by making all of the descendants to the left of a node less than the node, and all the descendants to the right of the node greater. This is true for any node in the tree. Normally, nodes of a binary search tree are unique, so we don't have to deal with the equal case, but if we allow equal keys, it can be a bit difficult. One easy way to handle it is to have the node have a counter, and if we have a duplicate, increase the counter in the tree. For our purposes, however, we'll assume nodes are unique. Back to our problem, how do we check if a tree is a binary search tree? It seems recursive. A naive try might, for each node, check if the left node is less, the right node is greater, and recurse into both, if necessary, to see if the property holds for the children. For a base case, we would return true for leaf nodes. Unfortunately, this is wrong. Look at this tree. Here, the left subtree contains a node 30 that is greater than the root 25, even though the direct children of each node are lesser and greater as required. 30 is greater than 15. We can fix this by checking the entire subtree for each node instead of just the immediate children. We can write methods to find the minimum or maximum children of a node. Then, we check if the maximum value of the left subtree is greater than our value, or the minimum value of the right node is less. If either of these is true, the tree is not a binary search tree. Let's write some code for this. In our validate BST method, if there's a left child, if the max value of the left subtree is greater than our value, we return false. All the nodes to the left should be less, thus the max should be less as well. Then, we validate the left subtree. This is necessary in the case all the nodes on the left are less, but the subtree isn't a valid BST. We do the same thing with the right, but using min instead. Finally, we'll implement the findMax and findMin methods. These are also recursive and return the max or min of the current node or the left or right subtrees, if they exist. You'll notice we don't have base cases for these functions. We could add a line that returned if there were no left or right children, but it would be redundant. We more or less continue if a child doesn't exist. So if neither child exists, we just continue through to the end. We'll write tests for a valid and invalid tree, and we can see they both work fine. One comment about this code, the findMin and findMax functions are virtually copies of each other. For functions like this, it's okay, but we can, if we want, replace these with one function that takes the min or max function as a parameter. The replacement code looks like this. This code is shorter, but is a little more difficult to understand. I think it's a matter of taste which one is better in this case. The takeaway is that in general, duplicating, particularly copying and pasting code, should feel bad as an engineer, and we should try to avoid it. Sometimes we can find a cleaner answer by deduplicating the code, and sometimes we can't. What's the runtime complexity of this? It's O of n log n for a balanced tree. For the root, we check every node in the tree in either the minimum or maximum functions. Then, for the root's two children, we check half the tree again. For the four grandchildren, we check a quarter of the tree, and so on. Each of these levels totals to O of n, and there are log n levels in the balanced binary tree. For an unbalanced tree, this approach is O of n squared in the worst case. For a tree like this, you check n elements for the root, then n minus 1 elements for the next child, then n minus 2, and so on, which is O of n squared. Can we do better? 
We're duplicating work here by checking some nodes many times. We can check each node just once by figuring out what the minimum and maximum values of the nodes should be as we recurse. Let's go back to our example binary search tree. Starting from the root, when we recurse into the left node, 15, we know that the upper bound is 25, since that's the value of the root. Any nodes to the left have to be less than 25, and we can pass that knowledge along. Similarly, for the right child, the lower bound is 25. When we look at the children of 15, it gets a little more interesting. On the left child, we adjust the maximum value to 15, but on the right child, the minimum is 15, with the maximum staying unchanged. Now we have values for both the minimum and maximum. In general, we change the upper bound of the left child and the lower bound of the right child. If we ever find a node's value is outside of these bounds, we can return false. Let's write some code. We set the default bounds to be negative infinity and infinity. Then, we check whether our current node is in the bounds passed in. If not, we return false. Then, for each child, if it exists, we recursively check the subtree, changing the appropriate bound, the max bound for the left tree, and the min bound for the right tree. If either of those return false, we return false. Otherwise, everything is okay, and we return true. This runs in O of n. We're doing constant work, checking and changing bounds, for each node. Finally, there's another O of n solution. In our tree reconstruction episode, we talked about different traversals of trees. For a binary search tree, the in-order traversal should be in order. We can use this property to check if the tree is a binary search tree, do an in-order traversal, and return whether or not the nodes are in order. The code looks like this. In the validation method, we go through each value and make sure it's greater than the previous value, and if not, we return false. We discuss traversals more in our tree reconstruction video linked here. Either of these last two would be a good answer to the problem. Here are a couple of further tree challenges. Look into balanced binary trees and implement one of the methods of balancing trees. Another common tree interview problem is finding the node of the binary tree that's closest in value to a given node. Coder Snacks will be going on an indefinite hiatus soon while I work on another project. Before then, I want to talk about preparing for coding interviews at places such as Facebook, Google, and Amazon. I'll be splitting this discussion into three videos, data structures you should know for coding interviews, algorithms you should know for coding interviews, and the game of interviewing. We'll start next video with the data structures you should know before you go into a coding interview. I hope you got something out of this video. If you have any questions, comments, something I've missed, or problems you want answered or covered in the future, let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, it would be great if you liked the video, subscribed, or both. Thanks! See you here next time on Coder Snacks.